of the most common substances on Earth is table salt, which has thousands of uses. Salt is often used to flavor and preserve food, to clean greasy messes, and to melt snow and ice. As common as salt is, it is actually quite remarkable. The scientific name for salt is sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is a chemical compound formed by combining sodium, a soft, highly reactive metal, and chlorine, a toxic greenish-yellow gas. When these two elements chemically combine, they react explosively to form sodium chloride. In this lab, we will demonstrate some basic chemical reactions, including the reaction that produces salt. As always, before beginning any experiment in the laboratory, be sure you are familiar with laboratory safety requirements. For a demonstration of basic lab safety rules, you can watch our video entitled Lab Safety. A chemical reaction is a process in which substances undergo chemical changes to produce other substances with different properties. A substance that undergoes a chemical change in a chemical reaction is a reactant. A substance resulting from a chemical reaction is a product. The types of chemical reactions vary depending on the reactants, the products, and the kind of chemical change involved. The type of chemical reaction that produces sodium chloride is called a synthesis reaction. A synthesis reaction is a chemical reaction in which two or more reactants combine to form a single product. The general form of a synthesis reaction is A plus B yields AB. A is the first reactant, which could be an element or a compound. B is the second reactant, which could also be an element or a compound. The reactants combine to form a single product, AB. The product of a synthesis reaction will always be a compound. The chemical equation for the synthesis of sodium chloride is 2Na plus Cl2 yields 2NaCl. The first reactant for the synthesis of sodium chloride is sodium. Sodium is an alkali metal, one of the chemically reactive metals located in group 1 on the periodic table. Although sodium is a metal, it is so soft we can cut it with a knife. Notice that the lump of sodium is shiny where we cut it. Most metals have a shiny luster, but when sodium is exposed to air, it reacts with oxygen, which produces a dull gray coating of sodium oxide. The other reactant in the synthesis of sodium chloride is chlorine. Chlorine is a halogen, a chemically reactive non-metal located in group 17 on the periodic table. Chlorine is a greenish-yellow gas at room temperature. It has a strong smell, like rotten eggs. However, you must never inhale chlorine gas because it is toxic. Exposure to chlorine gas can cause severe respiratory problems. To generate enough chlorine gas for this reaction, we will use this laboratory setup. In this setup, trichloroisocyanuric acid will react with hydrochloric acid to produce chlorine gas. Chlorine gas will be collected in this flask. Excess chlorine gas will be neutralized with sodium hydroxide in this last flask. This is a sealed system to prevent the chlorine gas from escaping. However, any time you are working with toxic or potentially dangerous chemicals, the experiment should be performed under a fume hood. Using our chlorine generator, we collected 1,000 milliliters of chlorine gas in this Erlenmeyer flask. 
This gas will be used to react with sodium to produce sodium chloride. Notice the sand in the bottom of the flask. During the reaction of sodium with chlorine, energy will be released in the form of heat. Sand has been added to the bottom of the flask to absorb some of the heat. Now, we will pick up a tiny piece of sodium with the glass tube. Since sodium is so soft, it will stick in the tube. After inserting the stopper in the flask, the sodium is still stuck to the glass tubing, so we need to release it. We push the sodium off the glass tube and onto the bottom of the flask. As you can see, there is no immediate reaction when the sodium is placed in chlorine. Sodium must be in a liquid state before it will react with chlorine gas. To melt the sodium, we need to add a few drops of water through the glass tubing. The sodium will react with water to produce sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. This reaction will produce so much heat that it will ignite the hydrogen gas and melt the sodium. Watch what happens. After the sodium melted, it reacted explosively with chlorine gas to produce a bright burst of light and heat. It also produced a white cloud of vapor, which was made up of extremely hot sodium chloride. Let's watch the reaction again in slow motion. Now that the flask has cooled, let's examine the product more closely. As you can see, sodium chloride crystals formed on the inside of the flask and in the glass tube. Through the process of synthesis, sodium and chlorine combined to produce the compound sodium chloride. Synthesis combines two reactants into a single product. The opposite of synthesis is decomposition. A decomposition reaction is a chemical reaction in which a reactant is broken down into two or more products. The general form for a decomposition reaction is AB yields A plus B. AB is the reactant, which is always a compound. AB breaks down into products A and B, which may be elements or compounds. Every chemical reaction involves energy in some form or another. Energy is released when two atoms or ions join to form a compound. As we just witnessed, the synthesis of sodium chloride released a great deal of heat. A chemical reaction that releases energy, usually in the form of heat or light, is an exothermic reaction. However, some chemical reactions require additional energy to break the chemical bonds that hold atoms or ions together. A chemical reaction that requires additional energy is an endothermic reaction. To help remember the difference between exothermic and endothermic, think of this. The word exothermic begins with the letters EX, which are also the first two letters of the word exit. To exit means to go out. Energy exits a reaction in an exothermic reaction. The word endothermic begins with the letters E-N, which are also the first two letters of the word enter. To enter means to go in. Energy enters a reaction during an endothermic reaction. A decomposition reaction requiring additional heat energy is called thermal decomposition. Since heat energy must be applied to begin the reaction, a thermal decomposition reaction is endothermic. Mercury-2 oxide is a reddish-orange compound used as a pesticide, a paint pigment, and 
in the manufacturing of mercury compounds used in batteries. We will use this setup to decompose mercury 2 oxide into its component elements, mercury and oxygen. Here is the chemical equation for the decomposition of mercury 2 oxide. Notice the triangular symbol above the reaction arrow in the chemical equation. This symbol indicates that heat must be applied to cause this reaction to begin. When the compound is heated, thermal decomposition begins. The heat energy breaks the chemical bonds between the mercury and oxygen, and mercury vapor is formed. Because mercury vapor is toxic, we work under the fume hood to avoid inhaling the vapor. As the mercury vapor cools, it condenses to form droplets of liquid mercury. The second product of the thermal decomposition of mercury 2 oxide is oxygen gas. As the oxygen is released, it passes through this tube. Here, we are collecting the oxygen by water displacement. As the oxygen bubbles into the test tube, water is displaced, so only oxygen remains in the tube. We can see that mercury is being produced by the thermal decomposition of mercury 2 oxide. But how do we know there is oxygen in this test tube? We can prove it is oxygen with a simple test. Oxygen is an oxidizer that supports combustion. See what happens when we insert a glowing wood splint into the test tube. The fire reignites, proving the existence of oxygen. Through the process of thermal decomposition, the compound mercury-2 oxide has been broken down into two products, mercury and oxygen. Sometimes an electric current is needed for a decomposition reaction to take place. Water molecules can be decomposed into hydrogen and oxygen by the process of electrolytic decomposition or electrolysis. Electrolysis is a kind of decomposition reaction that uses an electric current to break chemical bonds. In an earlier lab, we used electrolysis to decompose water into hydrogen and oxygen. The electrolysis of water was accomplished using this Hoffman apparatus. The chemical equation for the electrolysis of water is 2H2O yields 2H2 plus O2. Bubbles of hydrogen gas formed at the electrode in the left tube. Bubbles of oxygen gas formed at the electrode in the right tube. We used a wood splint to prove we collected hydrogen gas. When the flame from the wood splint came near the tube, the hydrogen gas ignited and produced a loud pop, proving we had hydrogen gas in the tube. We also used a wood splint to prove we collected oxygen gas. The oxygen in the test tube reignited the flame on the glowing wood splint, proving we had collected oxygen. By using electrolysis, we were able to decompose water into its component elements. Sometimes, decomposition occurs very slowly, or not at all, until a catalyst is added. A catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without being consumed in the reaction. A decomposition reaction that requires a catalyst is called catalytic decomposition. Hydrogen peroxide is a clear liquid that is used as an antiseptic, as a household cleaning product, and in the production of paper. Hydrogen peroxide decomposes to form water, and oxygen. If a flask of hydrogen peroxide is allowed to sit undisturbed, it will decompose into water and oxygen, but only after a long time. To speed up the reaction, we need to use a catalyst, 
such as manganese 4 oxide. Here is the equation for the catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Notice that the chemical formula for manganese 4 oxide is written above the reaction arrow. This is because manganese 4 oxide is a catalyst, not a reactant. The catalyst affects the rate of the reaction, but when the reaction is complete, the catalyst still remains. It is not chemically altered by the reaction. Now, let's see what happens if we try the same reaction with manganese 4 oxide as a catalyst. The hydrogen peroxide we are using is a much stronger concentration than the peroxide you find at your local pharmacy or grocery store. The reaction is extremely rapid, and it is so exothermic that the water boils and a cloud of water vapor and oxygen is produced. After the reaction has ceased and the flask has cooled, we can see that the manganese 4 oxide is still present. The catalyst caused the reaction to speed up, but it has not been altered by the reaction. In our next lab, we will explore three additional types of chemical reactions. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <laughs>